That's right, the thumbnail said it all. We're gonna go ahead and we're gonna go attempt to 3D print gaskets for McCullough's, at least these ones right here. And it just doesn't limit it to these kinds of, to these saws and everything. No, I mean, a lot of small engines. Is this something new? Is this something new that's gonna catch on? I don't know, it's something I've seen. I figured I'd give it a try. So let's go ahead, let's get started and print us out a gasket. <laughs> All right, so I had you guys along for this right here. It's just a hyperlapse of me designing the gasket on Fusion 360. I'm no engineer. I'm, you know, just a hobbyist at this. So it's just going off of measurements, off of a gasket, block, and stuff like that on doing this whole entire thing. So, um, I like to say, I have no previous education on this kind of thing. It's just strictly hobbyist. But as you can see here, it takes a little bit of time in learning to do these things. But once you've got it, it's pretty fun to be able to make your own stuff. Loaded it up in Ultimaker to put it into a G-code now so that the printer can read it and know exactly what to do. All right, so it is printing. Printing pretty good. As you can see, there is some stringing right here. That's pretty typical of TPU. Um, I went with the default retraction settings of 1.3 millimeters, but I probably should have gone more. And uh, like I say, it's a learning curve. Uh, so far, so good. And uh, like I say, we'll see the stringing and stuff. I'll refine that and everything. Right now, we'll just see how well the printer prints. This is my first time printing with TPU. Like I've never even done a test print, but what I do know you want to dry out your filament, especially in the spring, summer, wet times of years. And having a dryer keeps things very consistent. So, and TPU is one of those, it's a must kind of things. So, this is the awesome part of having a 3D printer and somewhat of an ability to use a 3D programs and stuff. So, I'll uh, bring you back when uh, halfway through or whenever we make more progress on things. Try number two. <laughs> two. Uh, first one printing way too fast. The nozzle clogged up. Um, went and checked the level of the bed, and for some reason, that over there, it was slightly up higher. And no matter what I did with the bed, it couldn't get close enough. So it just kind of, it was making a mess. So we're on try number two. I say it's looking a lot better. And all that white stuff, that's glue. Because I don't, I'm not using glue for this, per se, it's just printing on top of it. But for other things, like what I've printed here recently, you know, just a little bit of insurance. What not, so. Just like little holders and everything. This is from PLA+. Plus. Good stuff, so. Alright. Let's, uh, let's keep our fingers crossed. It's going to be a much slower print for sure. From the two hours and 40 minutes, I've taken it down to 60% speed now from that, from 30 millimeters a second. So we're, yeah, we're going down there, but it's going to be worth it, I hope. First layer done, and for the second print try ever, I was adjusting the bed on the fly too, and it was getting a lot better. So, stuff is very tricky, but not too bad. For a $207 printer with uh, an all metal hot end on it, hardened steel nozzle, and a dryer with brackets I made. So far, so good. Cross our fingers. Second layer is done. And the third back there is starting, I gotta say. 
looking much better. That spot above the, the hole there, it comes back and it, yeah, right there, it comes back and prints that, so. I think I've got this. I'll bring you all back when it's finished or it explodes. Alrighty, so three hours, 35 minutes, 52 seconds later, we have my first TPU print ever. So second try, had to level the bed, slow things down a little bit more than what it recommended. Printed at 240 degrees Celsius in a 60 degree bed, and the fan speeds, once it got up, I left it on 100%. But uh, they say you don't need it if you're unless you're printing fast, but let's face it, I'm not going to print fast, with, at least with this. But I like how flexible this is and everything. We need to go see how well this fits on an engine, um, at least mocked up to it and everything. So we have to go outside now. All right, we are outside, and we have the infamous 101B block in hand to test this on. Fitment. Now, I used an aftermarket gasket and uh, to do this whole process and whatnot here. So, um, kind of took measurements off of it and everything, but I, let, I made it to where the D port here, I left this thick so it can cover the D port, and my reasoning is, the 790 behind me is leaking somewhere. The top gasket, I'm pretty sure, is too thin because the tank is warped and going to other things and whatnot. I put a thicker gasket on it from Brian, and I'm pretty sure the bottom one is not leaking in any way, shape, or form. There's just It's just way too thick, everything good. But the top one, I did not replace. I used a... I reused one, put sealer on it, but I, I just think it's having a problem with actual squish. So we'll see if this one will work or not. Well, I got the holes dead on. All right, so it'll work. What I'm going to have to do is actually, I thought I was going to be too big to go on that. It might actually be just fine right there. So, one spot I'm going to have to look at here. We don't need that on anymore. There we go, the light. This I knew this curve right here was going to be the death of me right here. So, I need to bring this in slightly. Of course, some guys like to wallow that out, so we might just leave it. Um, there's plenty of bite right there to press down on. But uh, all the holes line up pretty much perfectly. By the time you get everything in, that lines up pretty good um, all the way around. It's pretty good. Uh, right here, got that to where it sits nice and hangs over. I don't see that being a problem. Uh, the deporting and everything on these over here, uh, I need to find a deport. I think I've got one sitting in a box somewhere. No. Uh... I think I do somewhere. I don't know what I do with it, but I don't think the tank and stuff's off of it. Uh, D-port block to be able to prove that and everything, but what it would have done is it, they come over and they take place of the boost ports. Well, the boost ports replace them, but uh, I made this to where I could work on one of these, but also if you're blocking off a D-port, like I say, putting a 790 tank on something like this, a 101 series or whatever... You want to block that off. There's a spacer in there with the D-port also on it. You JB weld it, and then you're going to have to seal the top part with the gasket so that it doesn't create a massive intake leak. But hopefully this will cure that. But all the holes seem to line up fairly good. So I'm not too worried about that. But this stuff, 
is super flexible. It is chemical gasoline resistant, chemical resistant from what I see. They use it in the automotive industry a lot. Um, and theoretically reusable. Woo, you guys are about to pop out of that. Uh, there we go. There we go. I think I got it. So, flexible, the whole shebang. I like it. So this is just one of them. I don't I don't know about like I said that took over 3 hours to make. I could probably speed it up, but this is more from, you know, my use and everything, but I'll try to refine it a little bit on a few spots to prevent leaking. Like I say right there, so a lot of guys would wall that out to the very edge and stuff. And there's still enough where you put an intake on it and it smashes down on it, it's going to seal it. So it's kind of one of them bits. But I like how the holes all line up and everything. Or they look pretty happy and whatnot. So plenty of area around here to squish and do its thing. So I think I got that pretty dead on right there on measurements and stuff like that. So that makes a good ga insulator gasket. And I know some people are going to be like, well, why not just cut one out of paper? Well, with 3D printing... You can vary your thicknesses on these and everything. This is 0 0.063 inches thick. I can go thinner, thicker, and that hole and whatnot on them. And I'm not limited in thickness on 3D printing either. Uh, if you need a special gasket, if you need to like double this for some reason, you can do that without stacking gaskets. That's the benefits, the positives to doing this. So... But, I mean, super flexible. I'm pretty sure it's reusable. It handles heat, chemicals, and stuff like that. I would not use it as an exhaust gasket. That would just be, that's a no-no, all right? There's a reason why you don't see these used. But for an intake setup on these and everything, I it's going to handle it just fine. I've seen before on these and whatnot that uh, people have started kind of using these. Um, this one, I am go we're going to be revisiting the 790 MC101 and ripping the tank off again and putting this in place hopefully i got the deep port enough if not i can always scooch this over more on, on the program rewrite it print it up and we can get another one on it but for now that is should fit the bill this one might have to be scooched over slightly don't know yeah we center everybody and it's happy so that was my biggest thing was get was matching this curve right here and like you like you saw i and i'm no engineer all right i'm 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 not a professional on fusion 360 and modeling and stuff but a lot of the stuff self creations you've seen i have done it myself and everything so um it's a really good hobby to get into learning how to modernize some of these things and whatnot and you know new techniques teaching old dog new tricks and stuff like that so um, one day my ultimate goal is to be able to cast new ones of these and everything, but that's going to take some 3d scanning and stuff. I don't even know where to start on that, you know, but, uh, that's way in the future thinking way ahead. So 3d printing gaskets, I'm going to say for now, that's, uh, at least the printing, the idea and concept success. I'm going to print out more of these. And uh, to have a stockpile of them on top of them, I'm also going to be doing the oil tank ones. I need to find an oil tank gasket and uh, other little ones and stuff like that. You know, the, the ones you're always having to dig for and everything. So that's just, uh, that's on the future list here and whatnot. Um, yeah. So, all right. Hopefully you like this video in here and stay tuned so we can get back into the 790. Um by the time this video is released, it is probably about 100 degrees out as I'm going to say this now. In the Friday coming, it's supposed to be in the 90s starting Tuesday, Monday actually. And it's just going to be unbearably hot in this garage. So uh, I don't know how much videos I'm going to be able to do. It is, like I say, it is just going to be incredibly hot out. So it's just one of those... It, Summer's coming in and it's hitting us like a wrecking ball. So, all right. I just want to say thanks for watching 
And uh, you want to see the 790 get rebuilt, put this in there and running, or you want me just to skip to it and say it runs, let me know in the comments. You want to see more of these gaskets and everything, more of my 3D printing? Let me know on that, you know. Um, like I say, it's, it's a matter of time and everything. I'm going to have a few weeks coming off and everything. I'd like to do more designing and stuff like that and everything on the computer and whatnot for these and stuff like that. I'm really trying to keep the spirit of these alive and everything, these saws going. And, uh... Yeah, you know, just just having fun with it and everything. Like I say, this was my first experience printing TPU. And you, you saw it right there. This is the second one. The first one, I had to re-level the bed. Stuff wasn't there. The second one, looks like it just printed out as a success. It's absolutely awesome. And it's soft enough where by the time you torque stuff down, it'll squish too. So, so. all right. So say, thanks for watching.